Welcome back. We're back to anim uh, animating the effects for the cauldron. Um, this is video two. We're going to go ahead and create the uh, sparks. Uh, when the lightning hits the log, we're going to animate the sparks to come out, and then we'll tweak those out in this uh, video. Get that looking nice. So, um, I'm going to go into end particles and then create. Now, down here, we're going to do the emitter um, under legacy. So, create the emitter. So the emitter will be placed right where the lightning strikes. So we're going to go into frame th uh, 31 and kind of get that set up to where the lightning is actually striking. That's really important that we kind of get that set up right where the lightning is actually striking. And get it as close as you possibly can. There we go. It looks really good. So hit the F key to kind of frame on where you're at and that kind of rotate around there. You can see if we we got it right where we need to. Okay. So particles are just going to go all over the place. They're being spit out 100 uh you know particles per uh second. And um I really haven't set anything up. I'm going to go pretty quick on here because I know you guys know how to do this uh stuff. This one here, especially we did the sparkler, so you kind of get the idea. So um, you know, if I go fast, you can always pause the video. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, add gravity. So let's go ahead and play the animation. The particles are being sp spit out. We want to go from directional to omni. Um, let's go ahead and change that. There we go. So now we got the particles being uh, spit out. Uh, one of the things we got uh, to realize, I'm going to go ahead and uh, hopefully this is, yeah, there's our, our outliner. So I'm going to put that over here. We're going to click on particles. It's really important that we have those, that particle selected. And basically we got the, the lifespan and all that stuff under the particle. Uh, the emitter itself uh, gives us the particle rate and um, the speed. So that's where we can actually change um, the speed and the rate. So basically we don't want the emitter to actually be spitting anything out. So what I can do here with rate is I can set a key at frame one. So that's what I'm going to do. Frame one, we want it to be zero. Okay. So at frame one here on the timeline, zero. So frame one, rate, right click over it, set a key. We're sending a key directly in the attribute. So that's a lot different than just hitting the S key. It's a lot more refined and better if you do this this way. Because if we hit the S key, it, it does all the attributes. It will kind of keyframe the entire gambit of things. We have all the attributes, and I don't want to do that. So let's go ahead and set the key for that. And we're going to move it up to where the lightning actually strikes. Okay, so frame 30, we want the rate to still be 0. Okay, so let's hit right-click over the rate and set the key. It turns bright red. And then at frame 31 we want it to be 100 okay um, and set the key so um, so basically it's going to start spurting it out and then at frame 40 we should have it stop so frame 40 we want it to still continue at a rate 100 and right click over it set a key and then at frame uh, 41 move it and then we want this back to zero again so if you done this, if you did this right, what's going to happen is it's going to animate right when the lightning strikes, boom, and it'll emit until frame 40 and then stop. Okay, All right. This is what it looks like so far. Boom. Okay, so cool. All right, nothing to be excited about yet, and that's fine. So um, we got the animation done on the par sparks, the the particles. So we want them to look more like sparks. So let's go to the particle shape um, side of things. So um, and another thing, the emitter. Um, let's go ahead and animate this. The the speed. You don't have to animate that. Um, let's put it at um, let's say five just for for now. So they come out a little bit faster. So when it hits, boom. They shoot out a lot faster. Looks a little bit more natural. Okay, there we go. So what we want to do now is we want to click on the particle shape one, and 
go to particle shape and we want I'm not too worried about live forever uh, forever yet um, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna mess around with that a little bit right now and just go to random range and just go something generic so for 48 frames it will stay it'll stay alive because we know it'll go to frame 40 so if I do 2 it'll last for 2 seconds that's 48 frames 24 frames a second random lifespan random be 0.5 okay so we don't want the the sparks to live forever we also want them to look uh, better than they do plus we need to add gravity so let's um, add gravity first one thing at a time so particle shape right hold the space bar go to fields go to gravity I'm not gonna go in there don't need to and let's go ahead and see if it actually works let's go ahead and play the animation boom and they are falling downwards that's great um, to be able to see these a little bit better though we need to go into particle ship again in the outliner okay I like my outliner and okay so what we need to do now is to uh, basically go from points to streaks so to streak and let's click on click on re uh, current render type and um, with that you should see like tail fade and all that stuff and uh, tail fade is just keep it to, to zero I'm going to do one point something like 1.3 on the tail size and let's see how that looks and that's going to give you your sparks a little there we go that looks awesome except there's not enough there you go cool so um let's go in here and we could actually have that follow the lightning strikes too so we can have the emitter actually follow it let's worry about that later let's make the particles look better so all right so we got the tail on it we got it streaked now we need to add a um, attribute here a color attribute so let's click on color add per particle attribute okay click add and then we can see RGB uh, PP is right here I'm gonna go ahead and right click over this and go to create ramp okay so create a ramp and right click over that and then you should see this and then go to edit ramp and I'm going to add a four so one I'm gonna click right in here two three and then of course we got the fourth one here so I just click anywhere in here and it'll, it'll add one you can also delete it by clicking on the X okay so you can move those up and down by clicking on it moving it like that you can also click on it and add a color so we're gonna have it start white hot so click on the open circle with the color in it and then click here and we're gonna make that perfectly white click on this one and we're gonna go to yellow bright bright yellow okay and then we're gonna click on this guy and we're gonna go to orange so click on that go to orange okay select orange go in here to orange and let's make it more a little more orange there we go there's orange and then click on this guy right here and this will take us into red so we want to go into the red there we go so the red so we kind of it's cooling off so it goes from white yellow orange and red okay and you can move these if you like here's the the birth of the beginning of the particle color and then as it hits the ground it'll be more red and you can change these to uh, help with how it goes through how fast it goes through the color so I usually make it something more like like this okay I'll click off and you can kinda see in the animation what it looks like so I'm gonna go ahead and minimize that let's go ahead and play the animation alright so
There we go. Okay, now the problem is we don't see much of the red. So we can pull this way back. Let's try that. There we go. So now it's starting to change a little bit faster. All right, so I'm going to stop, go back, and we're going to make some changes now to the actual um, emitter. So let's go into the emitter. And we've got the rate. Um, we want the emitter to move. So we have that uh, ability to move. So um, I would set your uh, translate and highlight those guys. Okay, right where it is. At frame one and right click on it and go key select it. So we're just going to key select those. And I'm going to go to frame 30. Right click over it, key selected. And frame 31, let's go ahead and move that down the way, you know, just kind of follow that um, lightning bolt down. So I'm going to go key selected and hit the W key and um, we're going to move that over and this way. Okay. And actually, let's do that. Let's go. Yeah, there we go. So. We don't want to do that yet. Let's go back to where it was. We need to do one more key select. There we go. So it's not moving yet. So and then we move it down to frame 40 and kind of follow this like that. There we go. And of course, from the side view, we can go in here and see place right there. There we go. This is kind of getting in the way. Um, and then right click and hit key selected. Okay, so there we go. And frame 41, we'll do another key selected. Okay. So, alright, so what we did was we um, key selected frame 1, 30, 31, then on frame 30, on frame 40, we moved it to follow the lightning bolt set a key, right key, key selected, and then uh, one more key selected on frame 41, key selected. So now we've got a uh, total animation that looks something like this. There we go. Beautiful. That looks great. And so let's play it again. Yeah, pretty amazing. So now we're going to go in here, and we don't have enough uh, particles coming out of the emitter. So what we want to do is we want to go into the emitter and we want to set the rate. So let's go click on frame 31, okay? Click on frame 31 or you can type it in here at the very end here, right here. You can type in the frame you want to go to. So that's actually faster. Click on rate, next to rate, click on and add we're going to go to something like 2,000. So do 2,000 particles. Click on rate, right click over it, and do key selected. And then at frame, and if you click on step forward one key, this will go to the next key, and we'll, we're going to type in 2,000 as well here. Click on rate, and key select, like that. And then if we go one more key in front, that goes to the next key, and that will be zero. So that works out really nice. So we just added more particles. There we go. And that's really coming together. Awesome. That looks great. Okay, now the only thing we need that's left is to select the particle. And so the particle, we want to have collide with the floor. So select the particle, shift select the floor. And then and then we're going to go in here and um, add, then we're going to add a um, collision. So let's go in here to, and particles make collide. There we go. So now when you play this, there we go, it's colliding. <laughs> now
Now notice that the particles are living way too long <laughs> and they're bouncing. So uh, that's easy enough to fix. So if we click on the particle itself, um, we can see that we can change the amount it's living, the lifespan, okay, and we can also change the geo connector. Connector. So if I kind of scroll across here, you can see geo connector one, um, resilience. That's the bouncing. So we're going to do like a a point one. We don't mind them bouncing a little bit. I mean that's normal. Point one five might be better. And friction, um, let's do a point zero one, just just a little friction, and and then we want, um, then we want the particle shape to not last as long. Let's say lifespan is oh one. Change that to one. Okay, so that's in particle shape one, and let's try to play that again. There we go. That looks not a lot nicer. Might still be living too long. Yeah. So, again, lifespan maybe 0.5. Okay, and we want it to randomize. There we go. Let's try that. There we go. Great. Dynamic, effective, and efficient. There we go. Perfect. Um... Let's go to seven. I like to see those sparks hanging on as long as possible. There we go. Great. That's it for this uh, video, and on video three, we'll take you into the fire.